I'd like to apologise to anybody who thinks that I am bagging on Nintendo a lot lately. I am incredibly, truly sorry, because, if I'm being perfectly honest, you ain't seen nothing yet. Today's episode is but a mere hors d'oeuvre, uh, a, mere, a mere taster of the things to come, because Nintendo has been on my shit list a fair bit lately, and the Nintendo Switch presentation didn't help. Also, this, don't worry about this, okay? We're just going through a, a transitory period right now as we uh, uh, redesign the set a little bit. I didn't go to the city dump to get this one back, okay? I don't think I've ever had my interest in a thing drop so fast than it has for the Nintendo Switch. After Nintendo thoroughly nailed it with the initial sales pitch, its recent Switch presentation was nothing to write home about, de-emphasising the portability of the system in favour of yet more motion control tech demo bullshit that leads me to believe we're not actually looking at a revitalised company with an all new system, but a desperate holdout from last gen successes looking to produce a Wii U successor. At any rate, the present presentation wasn't the problem, it was alright, I didn't have major issues with that. Not until the next day, when those extra details and the caveats and the ever-present Nintendo moves finally reared their hideous heads. I started the week reasonably eager to see more of the Switch, and ended it barely caring about the fucking thing. In the time following the presentation, Nintendo's done a pretty impressive job of strangling any excitement my otherwise jaded soul could have had about the thing, so let's look at the ways in which Nintendo, Nintendoed this whole thing up, shall we? First and foremost in my mind is Nintendo's online service, seemingly designed, on purpose, to be fucking shit. The company announced that the Nintendo Switch's online functionality would be a paid feature, similar to Xbox Live Gold and PlayStation Plus. Of course, everyone knows you can't just get away with charging for basic online access anymore, so you always need an added incentive. Both Sony and Microsoft offer discounts and free games on a monthly basis, and in the past they've gotten major retail games, brand new indies, and plenty of classic titles into the hands of their subscribers. Knowing this, and having a wealth of nostalgia at its fingertips, what has Nintendo done to match the value prospect of its competition? On the Switch's online service, you'll get one SNES or NES game a month, temporarily. As in, after the month is done, Nintendo takes it back and you'll have to buy it. What's wrong with you? Yeah, Nintendo actually looked at what Sony and Microsoft were doing and decided to make a demonstrably worse, literally objectively inferior version. Remember last week when I talked about Nintendo moves? Those boneheaded, incomprehensible, subtly arrogant moves Nintendo so loves to pull? Oh, this is one of them, alright. The utter stupidity of this offer is almost offensive in its disregard for the reality everybody but Nintendo lives in. Nintendo wants its users to pay for the privilege of borrowing a ROM file a month. A ROM file a month. In a world where people give PS Plus shit for revoking game access if you cancel a subscription, Nintendo revoking game access automatically for its own members is just indescribably out of touch. It's contemptuous, it's unbelievably fucking greedy. Unless this service is less than five bucks a month, and let's face it, it fucking won't be, this is an amazingly terrible offer when you compare it to the standard set by XBL and PSN, which weren't terribly fucking high to begin with. Only Nintendo. Only Nintendo would proudly reveal a service that's so very worse than its competition, and do so in a way that suggests it's not even ashamed of itself. And note that I said it's so very worse. It's not just worse, the worseness of this service is so very. So very worse is like three worses stacked on top of each other. This shitty little stunt seems to hint at Nintendo carrying over problems we talked about just last week with regards to Nintendo's horrible drip feed approach to the virtual console. Offering one ROM a month would definitely work better on a platform that doesn't intend to offer a huge bunch of virtual console games at any one time. In fact, if Nintendo were to do what it should and offer a vast catalogue of retro games immediately, it would make the paid online service look even shittier. Nintendo's done nothing to further detail its virtual console plans, but it would appear that it has no intention of making access to its back catalogue anything other than a fucking hassle. You know, 
because that's what Nintendo does best. Nintendo has the wealth of library offerings and nostalgic credit to create an online service that completely dominates PS Plus and XBL Gold. It could do so much with the metric cockton of NES and SNES games under its belt, from offering a streaming service like Netflix to, you know, maybe releasing more than one old emulated game a fucking week. Instead, the ever-complacent, ever-self-assured Nintendo sits on this wealth, expecting its fans to be grateful for every scrap of shit-stained toilet paper it yanks from its anus and tosses to them, which many of them are very grateful indeed. Oh, while we're here, let's look at everything else Nintendo did to kill my interest in the Switch. The $70 price tag for the Pro Controller. What's wrong with you? The stupid fucking prices for everything else. What's wrong with you? The scrapping of Miiverse, which was genuinely brilliant and something I would have gladly paid for the upkeep and improvement of. What's wrong with you? A shitty launch library. What's wrong with you? Voice chat being done through an app on your phone, for God's sake. What's wrong with you? Pre-orders for the things are already a shit show, despite Nintendo claiming it wouldn't have the usual shitty supply problems. What's wrong with you? Nintendo being vague about specific hardware details. What's wrong with you? Nintendo being vague about everything in general. What's wrong with you? Nintendo being Nintendo. Here's a TV that looks like an Apple. 3-2 Switch looking like it was made by assholes exclusively for assholes. The downplay of the initial Switch sales pitch in favour of making another gimmick-laden waggle festival. <laughs> $60 for Skyrim. Wait, really? Ser seriously? That's... Mario Kart Remastered, hinting at the overpriced ports like what the Wii U had because we totally need to be reminded of the Wii U. What's wrong with you? Mario looks like Sonic 2006 now because we totally need to be reminded of Sonic 2006. Life's good when you're a ninja block. <laughs> right, so back to that fucking dog shit on an imitation silver platter Nintendo is calling a subscription feature. You stupid bastard, Nintendo. You stupid, stupid bastard. You inconceivably stupid, utter bloody, stupid, stupid, bloody idiot bastard. Microsoft and Sony have their issues in keeping their subscriptions relevant and worth the money, but at least they bloody try. Nintendo, with the license to release more games than you could name, hasn't even attempted to pretend it cares about putting a significant deal on the table. Instead, all it could do during the presentation was go, but Splatoon! You like Splatoon, right? That's online. We'll hold that to ransom instead. We're great. Look, we put goggles on this fucker. You idiot dumpster moron. Okay, that's enough of that. Oh, and another Another thing, it really cannot be overstated how much Nintendo has in its pocket with regards to its handling of classic titles. It has the rights to so many old games, it could conceivably give, I don't know, like five NES or SNES games a month to subscribers over the course of five years and still have plenty left to sell. That's how vast the libraries of these games are. And when you remember their ROMs, because I sure as shit ain't gonna let you forget, when you consider they are tiny fucking files that can be tossed up with nary a care in the world, you inevitably have to realise Nintendo might just be the greediest, slimiest, laziest platform holders to ever hold a platform. And yes, I called them lazy, because that's what a huge amount of Nintendo's business ideas are. They make some fucking amazing games, you won't hear me argue that, hell they make some amazing hardware at times, but when it comes to resting on its laurels, few are better at paying lip service to effort while giving less than no shits. And how valuable are these games gonna be if you already bought those offered games? on the Wii U or 3DS and you carry your account over to the Switch and <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to stop myself there. I couldn't finish that joke with a straight face. Look, I'm not shocked or annoyed that you're expected to pay for the privilege of online access on the Switch. I think that was inevitable. But Nintendo has done almost nothing in the past 10 years to justify it, to demonstrate that it understands online services and will boast enough worthwhile multiplayer games to the point where I'm confident the money spent won't be wasted for 10 months out of any given year. The frankly a pathetic offer to let you borrow a ROM a month only compounds that issue by demonstrating Nintendo is thoroughly uninterested in improving itself in this area altogether. Like last episode, this one complaint is indicative of the wider attitude problem Nintendo has. In fact, this might actually be the most perfectly Nintendo Nintendo move I've ever witnessed, and I remember when they thought this was compelling viewing.
I actually noted in the script, cut to one of their stupid things, because Christ have they done so much stupid shit. Nintendo, for the love of baby goddamn Jesus, unfuck your head, because if we're in for another several years of caveat-laden offerings, and business moves so bizarre they belong in a Dali painting, you can just fuck off. <laughs> I don't like to predict things. Uh, in general, I don't like to predict E3, I don't like to predict how a game's gonna perform at market, you know. Uh, and I especially don't like predicting Nintendo because they are full of surprises. And the Nintendo Switch could be a massive success. But if I allow myself just a little bit, just a little bit of foresight, I do want to say that if this is the best they've got, if that sales pitch is indicative of the Nintendo Switch and its lifespan, I think think we're looking at uh, another potential Wii U on our hands. Now I could be completely wrong, and if I'm completely wrong I'll be overjoyed, because I would love, as I always do, I love it when a console does well and we get good games because that's just good for everybody, okay? Uh, and, and if anything, uh, this episode and, and anything else I might have cooked up regarding Nintendo is out of, it, it, it's born of frustration, okay? It's a frustrating thing for me, because I think Nintendo has always had and always will have the potential to be the best platform holder, the best publisher this industry's ever seen. And I truly believe that, but they keep making bad decisions happen. And that's got to stop. I mean, it won't, because Nintendo's Nintendo and Nintendo's gonna Nintendo for as long as Nintendo's Nintendo, but but we can hope, and we can criticise, and we can see where it goes. Uh, I do hope the Switch does well. I'm not here gunning for its failure. I never gun for the failure of a thing, but God damn, Nintendo, sort it. And while you're sorting it, do yourselves a favour and thank God for me. And when Nintendo's involved, I really don't like to predict things. Because they are, uh, uh they're, oh, fuck. Well, there's my knife. Brilliant. It's cool. <laughs>